What's up everyone? Welcome back to Crown Stag VoiceOver. My name is Neil Glasgow. So in today's video, I'm going to address a couple of things, a couple of uh, common complaints, misconceptions perhaps. Um, and <laughs> we are really going to have to discuss expectations. So with that in mind, let's get into it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is something that came up with uh, a couple of my students today, last week rather, um, and it was really talking about, we were talking together about how uh, many auditions they're doing and being successful, how many auditions it takes to essentially get your ratio of audition to success. And we had wildly different numbers coming out of this. And I thought, okay, this was going to be quite a good thing to, to go over with you. But one of the things that came up in this was the topic of compression and how to use it and, and what it sounded like. Now, I've always been really hesitant to talk about compression with you because I know how to use compression on Reaper. A lot of you don't use Reaper, um, which is why I'm, I'm hesitant to, to show you how to actually key that in. But I wanted to give you an idea of what compression was and, and what it really means for your audio. So I'm just going to move my mic back just a smidge. And this is compression at its, at its greatest. Imagine this, okay? This is, this is the compression. This is the compressor, my hands here. And as I talk, you're keying in your compressor. And right here, this, is, this isn't much. Nothing much is happening. But as I get to about here, you can start to hear a difference in, in the projection of my voice. I'm not talking any louder. And then as I start doing this and getting to here, now we're at too much compression. This is compression. This is what it does. It takes all the audio that you've got and it's squeezing it in, compressing it and making it more focused. So you don't have to talk louder to sound louder. And if you over compress, you're going to sound like this. I'm going to hear the back of your throat. You don't want that. And that can really ruin your audio. And that's, this is what came up um, with uh, one of the students. They were overly compressing. Now, if you use a compressor, okay, just as a general rule of thumb, use a two to one ratio. You should see something on your compressor interface that says ratio, two to one, okay? You want your compressor to be very, very light. And that is essentially wherever your voice starts to generate a little bit more sound. So for, for me personally, it's about negative 27 dB. Then that's when the compressor comes in. If I start getting really loud, the compressor brings that down a bit. So I've got a steady sound. OK, I'm going to stop doing that now. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is the misconception. Do you need a compressor? By and large, not really. Now, I say by and large, not really, because any voiceover that I have ever worked with, any voice actor I've ever worked with, the compressor that is used, and I do use a compressor, it's super light. It's really, really light. It is only to the effect of maybe using one hand <laughs> to, to get this effect. It's just about making your, your voice sound a little bit more pronounced, okay? And, and a, an even level of volume. Now, there's lots and lots of tips out there to, to key in your compressor. Find the one that works for your DAW. If enough people say to me about Reaper DAW, fine, I'll put something together about that. But I know a lot of you don't do that. So first misconception done. Do you need a compressor? Probably not, but it can help you sound good if you use it properly. Otherwise, you're going to sound like Bane. You don't want that. Mer. That's my pain impression. Anyway, second misconception. I've auditioned for 10 things and I didn't get a job. I've auditioned for 100 things and I didn't get a job. I'm crap at voiceover. It's just not how it works. And I'll give you a really good insight. Let me just bring this back a smidge. Giving you a really good insight into what you can expect when your career first starts and as the trajectory goes on. You're probably looking at, and this is a fair assessment, 
a hundred to one, so one hundred to one as a conversion rate, one hundred auditions to one job landed, and that's a fairly good turnaround for anyone new into the industry. If you're doing two hundred and not getting anywhere, three hundred not getting in, you need to look at what's going on. Something isn't happening right. Either it's your delivery, your sound, whatever it is. But I'd say if you've done three hundred auditions or two hundred auditions and you've not got anything positive out of that, seek help, seek, seek advice on that one. Because a, a, a good ratio for, think about all the, the other voiceovers that are out there. If you're landing one out of every hundred auditions and you're auditioning maybe 10 auditions a day, if you're on one of these big platforms, I mean, you can turn out a hundred fairly quickly. Um, that's landing you a job once a week, for example. When you start to develop and you get your client base and all that sort of stuff, I mean, I'm 10 years in the game now. I do... I probably land one out of every 30, 40 auditions I do. I audition a lot and I, I don't get hired more than I get hired. So don't ever feel like, oh, I'm a failure. I'm not doing this because I'm, I'm, I'm not landing these auditions. And this is what came up with the students. So one of them was kind of turning out this one in 30. And fairly early on, they've only been working in the industry two years now at this point. Um, whereas the other person uh, had been in for about three years, and again, they were doing, they were still stuck at this one hundred to one ratio, and this is where we discovered the compression issue. However, that's something that had been weighing on their minds for a really long time. The the person that that had been doing all the auditions, and this is why we had the group session to sort of pick the brains of, okay, well, what are you doing, and what could this person be doing? Where are you looking? Where could I look? All that sort of stuff. Collaboration. I'm a fan. Um, but they were really disheartened to think that they're, they're trying their best. In their mind, and of course in your mind and in my mind, we're all trying our best. We're all trying to do the best that we can possibly do. And it is about just nitpicking out where they might be going wrong. So what we discovered, and it's something I've talked about in a couple of other videos before, is how long it's taking them to actually get an audition in, how long it's taking them to edit and master what they're doing, how long it's taking them long is kind of the word that I'm, I'm going with it here how long it's taking them to respond to the auditions to any of their agents all of this sort of stuff and we started to to see patterns so the person who was so the person that was getting more jobs in was replying to jobs faster was getting their auditions in was replying to their agents faster and ultimately had a nicer sound because their compressor wasn't you know all over the place these are things that you think that you might have down pat because you've watched maybe a video like mine. You really do need to learn, 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 learn your DAW and everything that goes along with it. And if you're not doing that, if you're not spending the time doing that, you're probably setting yourself up for failure. And I, I'm trying to be as nice about that as possible, but I talk about it a lot. It's if you think you just jump in a booth and go, you're going to be banging your head against the wall. And something's going to happen six months down the line. You go, oh, if I just made that little adjustment there, wow, how amazing I sound. If only I knew that six months ago. So those are my misconceptions that I wanted to kind of address with you and let you know that it's not a bad thing, 100 to 1. Like I say, 200 to 1, yeah, maybe seek some advice. But also be honest with yourself. That's your task for this week that's the thing that i want you to go away and genuinely look at what do you know and i've said this before make a list what do you know and where do you need to improve and are you actually dedicating the time because i promise you if you're not you're not going to improve you're not going to get further in this career that you do want to get further in that you do want as your career like any other career you need the training and you need to put in the time and effort to do that if you're yet to get yourself a voiceover coach go and seek one find one that works for your budget or find someone that can work around your time scales but you do need that training find someone who can help you learn your DAW you need that training find someone who can help you identify the right mic for your voice you need that training. And if you want to find out where you can go for all those places, go to Fiverr, go to Google. There's a lot of stuff out there. I'm not going to recommend anyone in particular. I'm not going to you know, promote myself for that stuff. You know, I don't do that. But I'm always telling you, train, train, train. If you've got any other misconceptions that you'd maybe like me to address, 
let me know in the comments below. And remember, you can be a voiceover artist. I'll see you in the next video.